everybody, this is Charmaine Ironside, emotional eating expert and coach. And today I wanted to talk to you about perfectionism. So are you a perfectionist when it comes to your weight loss goals? And if so, make sure to watch the whole video because I'm going to give you some awesome tips on how to overcome this. Because when it comes to weight loss, perfectionism kills your momentum. So there's a few questions you can ask yourself if you're not sure whether you're a perfectionist. So the first one, you know, do you typically begin a new diet always on a Monday or always tomorrow or always in January or always next week? Is it always have to be kind of perfect timing to get started? Second question, do you typically want to speed up the process when you're on some kind of new regime? You'll work harder, you'll deprive more, you'll eat less. You always want to go extreme, all in. There's no kind of balanced middle ground for you. So that's a pretty perfectionistic tendency when it comes to weight loss. The next one is, do you believe suffering and deprivation are necessary to lose weight? Number four, do you battle strong urges to eat unhealthy foods or skip exercise? It's always a battle for you. That's, that's a hard way to go through life. That's a hard way to achieve your goals. So do you use the words good and bad to describe food? That's really a perfectionistic thing and it's not helpful because as soon as you label something bad, your brain actually wants it more, believe it or not. Do you fall off the wagon entirely after one unhealthy night or even just one unhealthy choice. So interestingly enough, research has proven that dieters who forgive themselves and give themselves compassion actually have way more success with weight loss than dieters who beat themselves up and guilt and shame themselves after they mess up on their diet. So that is not a helpful trait. Number seven, do you struggle with feelings of guilt? Do you use the word should all the time? I should drink more water. I should exercise. I should eat that. Because if you use the word should, you absolutely will not be motivated positively. Should is basically saying somebody external from me is telling me I, should, I need to do this. Instead of saying I choose and I deserve and I want to make good choices, saying I should is so disempowering. So take your power back by saying choose, deserve, I want, I choose, I deserve. No more shoulds. So last couple, do you beat yourself up routinely for stepping outside the lines you've drawn for yourself? And then you notice, you know, it's just a, it's just a proven thing, like I said in that earlier point. If you beat yourself up, you end up eating more and doing worse right away after. Because most of us who struggle with our weight, Food is part of our coping mechanism. So when we feel bad about anything in life, we end up turning to food generally. So that's not helpful to beat ourselves up. It just makes us feel worse and perpetuates wanting to eat more. Are you convinced that past fail attempts are because of your lack of willpower, your lack of focus, your lack of effort? No, they're not. People's willpower is limited everybody's even the most successful people in the world it's not about willpower it's about self-love and cultivating better habits and last one do you believe in the motto no pain no gain when it comes to fa fitness i hate that motto if you're in pain you need to stop what you're doing right away joyful movement movement needs to be enjoyable if you hate what you're doing in terms of exercise you need to find a different type of exercise so I want to flip it over now. You may have said, yes, 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 that's me. Every point I said, maybe there's two or three. There's a big spectrum for perfectionism. And so no matter where you fall on the spectrum, you can benefit from the following tips. So number one, when it comes to eating, adopt the 80-20 rule. I eat clean and I eat things that make me feel amazing and well 80% of the time. 20% of the time, I eat what my mind wants, what I crave, those sweets, those chips, whatever. 20% of the time I'm allowing myself to do that because I know that my body can handle it and that's just a way of living a more balanced life. Perfection with diet doesn't exist. You either, people that are perfectionists are on the diet or off the diet. There's no middle ground and I want you to find the middle ground because that's where life is. Next one. Pick one goal instead of like 10 to conquer at once. I've had so many fitness clients in the last seven years who come in and they have all these ideas and they're gonna change everything overnight. And it's 
absolutely impossible. Behavior change takes time. You need to choose one focus, one thing you're going to master, and then bring the next one, and then the next one. Because the truth is, our minds can only handle so much change at once. If we go way overboard, we actually end up sabotaging ourselves without even knowing. You know what I mean. You go down, you're doing great with nutrition and food and you're, you're walking and you're getting your movement and then one day you just decide you're going to have a big bender night and eat everything in sight and you fall off the wagon. That's actually a product of your self-sabotage, your mind doing that to you because it doesn't want you to change so quickly. So in order to not trip that, that alarm in our brain that causes us to sabotage ourselves, we need to make small incremental changes. And small changes consistently add up to a huge change after a year or after even six months. It's going to be a journey though. And that's the thing that people who have success with their goals, they realize that it's a journey. It's not a quick fix. And the last thing I want to say is believe that having the body you want doesn't need to involve struggle. Now, Deepak Chopra says very wisely, a negative motivation is incompatible with a positive result. And I have found that people who are quite perfectionistic think that they have to deprive themselves and scratch and claw them their way to a good body. But actually, it doesn't work that way. And that's a, that's, a key, that's a recipe for disaster. Because humans are wired for joy and happiness and things that feel good. So if we're always depriving ourselves of what feels good, eventually we're going to go the opposite way. Uh, we're going to binge. We're going to overeat. So you just need to realize that it doesn't need to be a struggle. It's going to be a journey. It's going to take work, but it's going to be an amazing journey. So I hope those tips were helpful. It's not about perfect. It's, I love the quote that says, don't let perfect be the enemy of great. And don't let perfect be the enemy of progress. So thank you all. I know a lot of you shared whether you felt like you resonated with some of those questions, yes or no, and I loved hearing your responses. I'm going to be drawing on Monday for a free entry into my next emotional eating course, which starts January 30th. So stay tuned for that email, and thank you for listening. Have a fabulous day, and we'll see you very soon.